everybody that know what I'm talking about, don't complain that it's smoke. Because y'all know what's coming up in just a couple of months. The reality is right now you can put enough t-shirts and jackets and coats and socks and everything on your feet to warm yourself up. This song says, down through the years, the Lord's been good, and I think we ought to give him a praise for that reality. If you feel like standing up, come on, let's do it. Down through the years, the Lord's been good to me.
verse. Watch this. Hold my hand, Lord.
a matter of fact, you may be seated at this time. You may be seated. But here is what you got to do now. Now that you know the person on either side of you, you've identified a name right where you are with heads bowed and eyes closed. Pray for that person that you just talked to. You don't have to know what's, what they're going through. Remember, we're taking everything to God in prayer. Come on, let's do that. Thank you so much for the privilege of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together as you have on this morning. It's evident that you were a good God to us on last week. You supplied every need that we've needed for the last 168 hours. God, you have demonstrated your power and that you brought us through dangers both seen and unseen last 168 hours. It's evident that we may not have had the food that we wanted to eat, but we had food to eat. It's evident. We may not have wore the clothes we wanted to wear, but we're wearing clothes. It's evident. It may not be the house we want to live in, but we had shelter and a roof over our head. And for that, we say thank you. God, all of us could have been like Brother Clyde Berry and Brother Herman Denson who were in the hospital. But thank you for bringing Clyde back to us this morning. With a heart and a desire to give you praise and honor and glory. And God, right now we know in this building things may not be like we would all desire for them to be. But in the words of Lanius R.V., a.k.a. Mima, it can be. God, we know it can be better, but we know it can be worse. So right now we say thank you for the state that we are in. Thank you for the condition that we are in. Thank you, Lord, for the situation that we are in. And so we're here right now. We got pain, but we're going to give you praise. We got some tears, but we still going to give you thanks. <laughs> we, we, we've had some tests, but God, we know you're worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. So we're here today not to leave anything behind, not to leave anything uh, left. We want to give you everything we got in our heart. We pray, God, that you've accepted our service of worship and the songs that we've already rendered, the prayers that we have already prayed fellowship and communion that we've already had with one another as we've smiled and greeted one another with a holy kiss as you've commanded us to do we say thank you right now we do pray for Herman Lord that you continue to allow his body to heal from the surgeries he had on last week dealing with his heart God we pray that you would regulate that heart 
fix that heart. We know you've done it spiritually, but God, we're asking for physical healing in his body. Because we know again that you got, got, got that kind of power. We pray for Grinda and Trina and Ceresia who buried a father, a father-in-law, and a grandfather on yesterday. We pray again your grace and your mercy continue to be upon them. And you would lead, guard, and guide. We pray for Jeremy, a great-grandfather. We ask again your continued blessing upon their lives. That you would help them again through what they're going through in this season. Once again, thank you for bringing us together as you have on today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all who agreed said amen. 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 I greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're excited and delighted uh, to be in the house of the Lord just one more time on this particular day. As we said before, as you all can recall, a couple of Sundays ago, uh, Reverend Stephen Skinner uh, led us in the Word of God, dealing with the issue of uh, generational uh, issues as far as the Church of Jesus Christ is concerned, as far as the Church of God is concerned. On last Sunday, uh, we, we are still praising God <clears throat> for the message that God gave us through uh, Reverend Sean uh, Aguilar on last week. And last week, we could, we could literally see the generational differences that were there between a father and a son. Uh, but because God, again, is, is, a, is a multi-generational God, he know how to handle every situation, every circumstance we can face in life. Amen. So today, today you are here, as you can see, when you look at the stage, you can see things are different than you've ever seen them before uh, as it relates to our church. I want to share this with those of you who are visiting with us on today. Uh, this service is going to be a little different than what we would normally have, any service, but what we want to let you know, we're still worshiping God. We're still praising God. You've already sung, you've already prayed. Uh, we're going to go through scripture and look at some things, but we want to, uh, we're going to have kind of an interactive day to day, uh, <clears throat> whereby we want to take time as a church. Uh, Sean talked about it last week, the portrait, if you would, of the patriarch. Uh, this, this today is going to be kind of more of a portrait of the good shepherd family. Uh, and that's one of the things that we want to, we want to focus our attention on. Uh, as we go through this day. So I want to start, this is again interactive, I want to start off by asking this question. Why, why is it, why is it that multi-generational, multicultural, and multi, what we say, ethnicity exists? Why does that exist? Multi-generational, multicultures, and multi-ethnicities. Why does it exist? Anybody, this is interactive. I told you church is ever different than what you ever had. Why does it exist? I'm sorry? It can go back to Genesis. What do you mean by that, Mary? It can go back to Genesis. Uh, it's taking the time because every family has an origin. All right. Take it back to Genesis. All right. Why do we have the book of Genesis? Began the beginning. That's the answer I was looking for, right there. There you go. Think about it. Why? Then, and that's it. You 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 work through it. Why does multi generations? Why does multicultures? And why does multi ethnicity exist? The answer is God. All things were made by Him, and with out Him was not. Anything made, I thought y'all were going to quote it with me. That was made. So we see what we read, Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says what? In the beginning, what? God created the heavens and the earth, right? So when we think about, again, we talk about from standpoint of multi, when we, when we use the word multi-generational, what we mean is that we're looking at people in different stages and ages of life. Multi-generational. Would you all, would you look at our congregation and say today that we have a multi-generational congregation? Let's see. I know we got somebody in here 90 years old. Everybody in here 90, please, please stand. Come on, help us, Barbara. Don't, don't help her. Don't help her. Everybody in here. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? That's, that's 90. 
got any people in here 70? Y'all don't have to stand. Just, just raise your hand. 70. In your 70s. All right. So you got some, any, any people with one digit? Two, three, four, five. See, we got to be, so we are a multi-generational congregation, right? I think Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Skinner showed us uh, in terms of kind of that illustration. I think he used the family of Brother Larry Wilson, right? When you looked at Larry, what do you see? You see Larry, you see um, um, uh, Larry and Dixie, and then that was, that was Tim and Karen, and then that was Chan and Jeremy, and then went all the way down with the Kennedy, right? So we're looking at four generations of people in one family. And so when we look at the church, the, the church is made up what, of what? Multi-generational people. Why? Because God made us, right? We talk about it being multicultural. We talk about multicultural. We talk, again, multi-generation would be, we could say, age or stage. Multicultural would be that of, of, uh, of, of our ways, the way we do things. We come from different backgrounds, uh, been shaped from different backgrounds. <clears throat> We're born in different places and things like that. So all of those things add up to shaping our cultural thinking, a thing, those things that we agree to from a standpoint as a, a group of people. And then we talk about multi ethnicity, it is that very that, it is that very thing, is that we are people and we gather together as a group of people, in our case, we, ga we gather together as a group of people centered on who? The person of Jesus Christ. And so when we come together as a church, what we recognize that there is a multiplicity of people in the church of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that you're different than everybody else? Amen, amen. And so, and so what's, what's important is to keep in mind that God has put us together in, in the church again for a purpose. I want you to do this. Go to Acts chapter 17. This is going to be a brief message. Acts chapter 17, verse, look at verse 26. Acts chapter 17, verse number 26. And I'm going to ask somebody, somebody on, on this side who's all the way in the back, maybe three or four pews from the ushers, coming to the front to read Acts chapter 17, verse 26 and 27. All of y'all have to stand at the same time. Come on, come on, y'all. On this side, on the, no, you, you, you too far, Pat. You too far. You too far, right behind Pat. Thank you. Somebody behind Pat. Anybody, come on. Anybody. Acts chapter 17, 26 and 27. Somebody. There you go, Denise. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Verse 26 and 27. This is the word of God. Everybody say amen. amen. This is the word of God. Notice again, what Paul goes to Athens, and when he gets to Athens, Athens is a place where there's a lot of pagan worship, a lot of Greek worship, worship of a bunch of idol gods and all of that sort of thing. And when he, he, he is going through, the Bible says that he knows that there's an inscription to an unknown God. And so when Paul introduces God to the people of Athens who have been worshiping idols, he said, I want to talk about that God that you don't know about. Let me tell you something about it. And so when he gets to verse 26, he is literally describing the fact that all of us come from one person. And who is that one person we come from? Adam. We all come from that one human being. His name is who? Adam. The Bible says what? We come from one blood, right? So when we look at the, at the issue that we're talking about blood, we know we're talking about it, it referring to a human being. So he's, he, so he's saying that we all come from one blood. Now what's amazing about that is sin has affected how we look at each other, although we all come from one blood. Right. Would y'all agree with me? Right. That, that the reality is all that God has done, he's given us all one blood basically can be traced all back, all the way back to Adam, but we got a bunch of different paint jobs on the outside. We look different, and God made us different, and that's what I like about you know God. God made us like Baskin Robbins. Yeah, when you go in there, man, it's all kinds of, all kinds of flavors. You get what I'm saying? 
And I think we enjoy that. We embrace that. We, we enjoy the fact that we're not all the same. Because I keep saying it, if we were all the same, it would be quite boring. But when the fact that he's given us this variety, and the Bible, knows what it says. The Bible says that he has determined. He has made a determination. Again, look at verse 26. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined. You know what it, that the word determined means? It's an appointed assignment. Everybody say an appointed assignment. God has given every last one of us an appointed assignment. We have an appointed assignment. And when you think of an appointment, an appointment is something that is done that is very precise. It is very particular. It's not really open for a whole lot of different uh, variety, if you would. It is an appointment. Tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, about 1 o'clock, I'm supposed to go to the doctor for them to check my neck, right? All right, so if I'm going to the doctor for an appointment to check on my neck, when I get in there and the doctor walk in, I'm not going to do, ah, <laughs> to check my teeth because he's here to check my, because that appointment is very particular, it's very precise, it's not of a lot of variety to it. So what it's saying that God has already made a determination God is already appointed. So the way you are is the way God intended for you to be. Amen. Can I get a witness in Amen. here? Amen. Then God says as a result of that, you are what fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm going to say it until I die. Don't you ever let anybody put you down about the way you look because you have been created by God. And since you created by God, and it can't get any better than that. Which says to God, you are exclusive. It says to God, there's no one in the world exactly like you. So determined means it's an appointed, it's an appointed uh, uh, issue that uh, an appointment, a appointed assignment, an appointed task, an appointed function that one has. And then notice again, he used the word, not only is it determined, but he says they're pre-appointed times. Now, he's talking about us. They're pre-appointed. In other words, God has already, in, in the past, made a decision where you were going to be born. Well, let's say it this way. I take it further than that. He's, he's already kind of pre-appointed when you were going to be born. He already knew it. He already knew it. So, so he, he pre-appointed it. It was a time that has already been decided by him. So, so you can desire to live somewhere else, but you got to learn to thank God for where you're at, where you work. Thank God for where you come from because he is the one who is determined based upon the fact that he made you. He determined it, that assignment, that appointed assignment that you have, that appointed task you have, that appointed function that you have. He's already made a determination about that. Then the word says he's pre-appointed, and then he's, the, the word says that he has set, I, lo I love that, and the boundaries of that dwelling. In other words, he's determined it's a fixed limit. That's what it's saying. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a fixed situation that you have, and it's pre-appointed, but there's also a fixed limit in terms of you living where, exactly where God wants you to live. And notice, there's only one purpose for that, because remember, he says, he determined it already, right? And here's the reason. Look at verse 27, and I'll be done. Verse 27, here's the reason. So that they should seek the Lord and, and, and in the hope that they may grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. You know why God made us? Yeah. The, the, the text says it. He made us so we could seek him. Mm -hmm. Just tell a neighbor that he made me to he made you to seek him. That's why he made you. He made you to seek him. Now, 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 when we're living in this world, it looked like it's something else, doesn't it? It kind of looked like he made us to live in nice houses and drive nice cars and Wear nice clothes and all of that. It sort of looked like, but his primary reason for making you so that you would seek. Man, 
man, just imagine if we could live our life simply like that. Knowing that the reason I exist is so that I might know God. He made us so that we could know him. He made us so that we could have fellowship with him. He made us, thank you, Sister Doucet, so that we could walk with him. We could abide with him. We could worship him. We could praise him. And we can never get that in our mind. Then we will fully understand and we have, have a more of a, an appreciation again for the fact that we are in this world because God chose for us to be here. Yeah. And God has made us for a purpose. It's so that we can seek him. All right, so this morning, this morning, today, uh, I've got some people that, that are going to represent those, those seven of you that we've already talked to, and I've already asked that you would, uh, you would join us in this process. Would y'all just stand where you are right now? Just stand where you are. And as they do, church, I'm going to ask y'all to just give them a hand of encouragement right now. And y'all can start, y'all can come this way. I'm going to come on this way. Those of you that have already, you already know your assignment, we've already talked to you, come on this way. Um, uh, nobody panic. Chan is coming up to the pulpit. <laughs> Chan is going to come up to the pulpit. Whoever you want to say, Chan, is it? you're the first one here. Everybody. James Johnson, would you give him a hand? Yeah. Johnson, you been James Johnson. That's Thomas and Tyler. Who else is supposed to be up here, Chan? Sister Ardwan, are you here? Sister Ardwan, are you here? All right, I'm sorry. We didn't, we didn't. Sister, Sister Ardwan. Sister Ardwan, if you will, please. Excellent, excellent. Thank y'all so much. Does everybody know these, these people? Y'all know? Y'all know? Do you see, do you see multi-generation? Yeah, James, James, James got a little gray up there, so it must be, must be a little multi-generational going on. Look at Thomas. Thomas, Thomas, we know it's multi-generation. Got the pants like that, and knees out, and got the hair working. But no, no, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that in a critical way, right? What did I just say? God made us different, right? And he made us to be a multi-generational church that, that, that we express who we are, what? In different ways, amen? So let's keep that in mind. And that's what we want to focus on today. That's what we're going to keep our attention on. So we've developed, we have developed about, uh, uh, is there anyone here, Jason? Miss Connie, Connie, Connie McGrew, Connie McGrew. Maybe she hasn't made it here. That's okay. We're going to go with the six we have here today. Pray for Ezra. Ezra uh, uh, sent a text this morning, said that he was sick. He was not going to be able to, uh, to be here on this morning. So pray for him. So what we're going to do, we've got, we've got about five questions for them to answer. But what the goal is, is that each of them are going to answer those questions that we ask them, if you will, whatever those questions are. We're going to ask those questions just based upon how they view it. Does it make sense? Because what we clearly know, there's the possibility that James is going to see things one way, Right? And then Thomas may see things what? Another way. Another way. Same situation, same question, but, but again, the variety that God has given us, it's okay for us to celebrate that. And that's the thing that we're going to focus on. So could we look at the first question, please? Could we bring up the first question? We're talking about this generational form. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. This is what, what is the definition of Jesus Christ's church based upon your understanding? Oscar, I want to start with you on that question. What is your what is your, your definition of Jesus Christ's church based upon your understanding? Okay. Uh, I have the ones that believe that he died, was buried, and he was risen, and he is Lord and Savior. That's his church. Y'all ain't clapping on that. I thought y'all would. <laughs> it's different this morning. I'm telling you. It's different. It's different. So, absolutely. That's the answer, right? We believe that Christ, that's the church. So let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate that. Tyler, how about you? What, what did you write? What did you write? Or what did you, what, what do you see? Testing. Um, I said my definition of Jesus Christ Church will have to be the people inside the church coming together, working together, and living and understanding the word of God. Again, you said coming, read that first line one more time. The first line. You said the people coming 
coming together, together and working together yes. and understanding the word of God. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, I tell you what, let's, let's in, any one of you that want to answer that, that, that question, any of the, the three of you who didn't answer, the four of you who didn't answer, any one of you who want to answer that, you can. Either, either one.
do a call game mm-hmm. and all that. I got uh, brother Lenny, all mm-hmm. them. And I seen them up here. It's like I got family value. Mm-hmm. Right. And I took that home and I, I kind of looked up to that. Amen. And so I was wondering if the uh, youth kind of are seeing that same when they come in here. Amen. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent observation. Excellent observation. Notice again what he said. He learned, he actually developed family values by seeing our brothers standing together or seeing the brothers interact with their wife, their children, because again, he comes from a single parent home. So he learned what he's learned, said, I learned how to be a man, paying attention to men. Does that make sense? So what it says to us, that we gotta always be upholding that example no matter what. No matter where, we can't, we can't let our guards down at any time. This is true, I mean, I'm, I'm just sharing this. I was, talk, I was talking to Sandra one day, and you know, they were kind of talking about some things that were going on in city games, and then, you know, and they were kind of talking about some folk in church, some pe- people that just wasn't doing some things that they supposed to be doing. And she said, Pastor, you just don't know sometimes we got some deacons and some preachers that are just doing some, I, all I heard was deacon and preachers, and, uh, and after that, I, I couldn't wait. I said, Sandra, is it ours? She said, oh no, Pastor Nana. I said, oh, please tell me. Because what we, what's clear to us is that we don't want to be an example just here. We gotta be an example no matter where we go, so that we might, you know. So thank you, Oscar, for sharing it with us. And again, it's something that we gotta, we, we clearly recognize. We gotta keep uh, developing. Let's. Anybody else want to answer that one? Anyone else? Please, please. Well, I see my, well, every third and fourth Sunday, I go in the back 
with the children's church Ooh. and I help out. For example, I'm helping with the moms right now. So just helping out with the younger youth. Okay. Just just question. Do you see yourself as necessary? You ought to see yourself. But watch this. You got to be serving. Because remember, it's the body of Christ, right? Here's my question. What part of your body you don't want to work? You want all to all work, right? So now, what that says, if I'm in the body of Christ, I ought to be working because I'm necessary for the, for the growth. So, so Tyler, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for contributing. Thomas, how about you, man? Uh, come right to say, you said, uh, I feel like I'm an asset or whatever of the church because mm -hmm. uh, God gives a job like a camera and pictures to help us you know, grow the church, build it up, see you and to do other things. Too. Okay, so you see yourself as necessary. Yes, sir. If, if, you, if you weren't here, would our church be different? Would our church be different if you weren't here? Yes, because you're not here. Yeah, because you are a part of, you get it? And that's the, that's the thing that we're saying. Everybody, everybody contributes to the growth of the church. And how about you on that? Well, I put, um, paying my tithes, giving offering helps the function of the church. And um, going back to what I said about uh, training more of us to be in leadership position and also how the church functions, the ins and outs of the function. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Listen. Well, I, listen. She did two things. The answer to the first question is what you're doing to help the church grow. Give your tithes and offering. Yeah. If you want to build a new building, you got to do what Chad said. Give your tithes and offering. Amen. So again, what she's saying that I see that see that country that contribution that I'm making. Is, 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 is a part of what helps, again, the church to grow. And you're absolutely correct, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, do you want to do anything on that? Yeah, well, please. I'm more concerned about my growth in the church. Okay. And I, I don't want to be like a person that knows the Bible, knows God. You know, I want to be uh, more productive in the church. But in order for me to do that, I got to, I got to learn more. Yes, sir. I got to know more. observation. Yeah. If, if, if I'm not growing, I can't help anybody else grow, right? Amen. Amen. Good, good. Oscar, how about you? Well, I have that, uh, I pretty much like what he said, I want to bold myself in the world, in the word of God. Mm. Because uh, I work at a diversity, diversity place with all kind of religions there. Yeah. And so when I work the graveyard shift and I have with Muslims and this and that, and they show pride in their uh, religion. They like, I really know my word. Mm. And they used to kind of uh, test me a little, and I didn't have answers. Wow. But then as years and months passed, I started having those answers. Yes. You know, and it turned to when they was trying to convert me or wow. turn me on to wow. their religion. Wow. They end up saying like, well, you know what? I wish I had Christian neighbors like you. Wow. You know? So the, when I bowled myself and I had those answers, when they kind of like, why are you this? Why are you Christian? Why are you a Baptist? Yes, you know, and I have those answers now. So bolding yourself in the word, like he's saying, that's good. And I feel I don't do enough, Ryan. Wow. I, really, I feel that way. Wow. I don't do enough. I'm not serving as like I should. My you know, goodness. and I want to. Yeah. Listen, no, if there's anybody else feeling like, 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 like uh, Oscar, you ain't got to raise your hand, but at least just do this. <laughs> Because cause, cause really, that, that, it, that literally ought to be the attitude of every one of us in here. Because we can't ever do enough for all that the Lord has done for us. But I can never get to a point that I feel like I'm not doing more if I don't even start doing something. I got to start doing something. 
so that I can feel like I need to do more. Amen. Thanks, Oscar. Thank you. Let's look at the next question. Next question. What do you desire for us to do differently as a church family that would give you confidence and comfort uh, to invite others? I'll tell you what, I'm going to start with you, Chan. And all of y'all can give an answer to that one, please. Please. Um, well, I, I have more, being more time conscious um, for those people who don't normally go to church uh -huh. or, you know, those that are not believers. You know, they don't want to spend all day, you know, because that may kind of discourage them. You know, you. like, why do I got to spend so much time doing this? Why do I got to spend so much time doing that? I feel like we can still serve God, worship God, but in a more timely fashion. In a more timely fashion. Since, now, since we've been, let's be, let, and unpack that for us a little bit. I want to, I really want to hear you. I really want to hear you. Uh, I mean, uh, you know. Give me an example. I guess we're praying. If I preach too long, just say it. No, I'm not, not with the preaching. I, I feel like the preaching should be, you know, extensive and in depth, mm -hmm. you know, where they can get the full understanding. Okay. But as far as, like, praise and worship, okay. sometimes I feel like we spend too much time. And okay. I understand, you know, the Holy Spirit leads us in different ways. Got it, but, got it. you know, I mean, sometimes we'll sing a praise and worship song for 15 minutes. That's two songs on a record, on an album. You know, so that can, you know... That sometimes can be a little long. That's fine. Again, remember what she is telling you. She's telling you what she's seeing, right? Because again, she has she has a generation of people that she communicates with, and all she's saying sometimes the song goes too long. But listen, you know, since you saying that, Jan, I'm gonna go along with you. I think you're right. And listen, why I say that sometimes, sometimes. I, I, I said this to Brother Edward. I, I like Lee Williams, but I would I couldn't sing in his background because I'd get bored. <laughs> come on, Lee, come on. Would you give us something else to say, man? I think I'd get bored because you're saying the same thing what, over and over and over again. And I think what Chan is saying is that is that I think the, the, the goal of any singing that we do ultimately, it ought to be to get the message out. And I think sometimes we're better off leaving folk with wanting more. Does it make sense? So I think that's a good observation, but it will be something I think that we, you know, that we talk about as far as whether it's with the praise team or whether it's with the choirs, the leaders of the choirs. But great observation. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, James, we're going to come back to you. And then we're going to go to everybody else, okay? Well, I would say doing nothing because... What is Brother James giving you? What he sees. What he understands. We heard what Chan said. It's a little different than what James said, right? Again, not necessarily, not a right or a wrong to either one of them. But what we're saying is part of the conversation of our church. Amen? It's part of the conversation. All right, Tyler, uh, Thomas, Sardwa, and uh, Oscar, all of you, please. Well, right now I'm comfortable enough to bring a friend to church, but my only thing would be like, I'm kind of nervous just like if they come, they might be judged by like what they're wearing or how they bring themselves. And I just don't want them to feel like, oh, I can't go back to any church at all because I'm gonna be judged on this or that. So I'm just saying maybe like, just like not being judged on how they look or how they come in. Tyler, 
right. Having, having said that, I'm going to ask you this. You know, I don't know what you said, that, that you, don't want, you don't want the friends to, they don't want to feel like they're judged. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess what I'm saying, is that something that, that would, would be communicated verbally, but somebody would say something, or do you see something else? Would it be something else that might bring that on? Not maybe like verbally or maybe like, maybe like, yeah, like a look or something like look. that. Okay. Or, yeah, or like maybe like your friend in the back and they might say something okay. and then you like might not get the right reaction. Like, oh no, I don't want to talk anymore okay. or something like that. Okay. 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 All right. Did we hear that church? Young, young, young people are saying that there's a sense of, of, of and it can be in any church, all church people, a sense of judgment. Sometimes because a person what looks differently. Amen? But 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 the Bible says that God is no respecter of. But but remember remember the message from Sean last Sunday? When that boy came back, he was toe up. But it didn't stop his father from going to protect him and and taking care of him. He accepted him just as, just as he was. And God accepted us just as we were. Yeah, Chad, I think you, you all, did you, oh no, I'm sorry. Thomas, please. Um, like I would say, like, people would judge and like, I would say like the same question, like having more like stuff that we need to do. Because like, I guess nowadays in our generation, like people think that we're cool or whatever, but like, we're not in the seat of sin church and like spirit time and talking and talking. So like, they don't know like you know like what it actually means to you know maybe if they're Christian. So maybe if you sit them down and kind of like like can they relate to them or like have somebody you know to uh, like well like actually like you know sit down and be like hey this this you know this is what you really need to know mm -hmm. or whatever like okay okay all right or, like you know, youth like as far as the, the the young people are concerned excellent excellent great observation great observation. I'm sorry. Well, Tom, Thomas, Thomas went back again, sort of paraphrasing his concern is that we can do more that would be relevant to our youth, more that would 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 would, would be in touch uh, with our youth. And again, it's not. I don't think. I don't think in any sense what he's saying is necessarily an indictment against against uh, you know what what's currently going on. It just feels like we that's more that we can still be doing uh, as it relates to our youth. But the, the, those are the things that take. Take some dialogue. It takes some have some conversation to find out what those things that can be Thomas that we could actually help to uh, to contribute. Amen. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So start one, please. Okay. sound like pastor said it's just all done told us and it is a need it is a need yes Oscar please well I'm, I'm confident um, it would be comfortable with inviting people okay. um, when I did in the past I invited friends and when I was young I invited friends and I'd see their parents members here and everything and wow and I, I want to pick up with what she's saying yeah we can do better to accommodate because you know Times change and we're doing things a little differently now. And okay. like you say, the tables and have places and everything. We can set that for a goal. But I'm comfortable with inviting people because when I do, they, they love it. So I do. So come on, give God a hand, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think we got one final question. Um, how how does being a member of Good Shepherd impact your daily life? Oscar, 
we'll start with you and then work our way back. Well, it impacts my uh, life positively because I'm proud to be a member of Good Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church. And um, it, it impacts it good because uh, I, 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 people can tell that I'm a Christian. All right. Okay. My friends do, and they, they know, like I say, they notice the change and everything. So that's pretty much how I feel about that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Excellent, man. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, Ty. Well, I was actually born in Good Shepherd, and all my years here, I never felt like my relationship with God, with God has been forced on me. It came natural, and that's like, thanks to the ministries I'm in, like Teenage Girls of God, I feel like that's a safe place where I can open up to, and like going to Stony Creek, that's also helped, and just listening to what you preach and what I learned back in Sunday school, I just feel like my relationship with God is getting stronger every day, and I feel like I'm comfortable with talking to him anytime. Um, well, I kind of had a few things. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but it impacts my life um, based on my character. I guess, like Ty, um, like Tyra, I was born here. So um, I've seen several examples uh, going back to as far as family, um, becoming a single mom. I've seen several great examples here. Um, and now even as a married woman, I'm sorry, y'all know I get emotional. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, but even as a married woman, I see, I feel that, you know, there are several very good examples that I pray for and I thank God for daily because mm. it helps me to make the decisions that I make. Mm. You know, mm. I think about things that I've saw and that I've heard, you know, so it affects the choices that I make in life. As far as my family, my job, you know, being a parent. Excellent. Excellent. Give them a hand and appreciation. Um, James, Chelsea Lee, Tyler, Thomas, Zardwan, uh, Oscar, thank you all so much. Thank you. For representing us and, and giving us, if you would, a portrait, if you, if you will, of who we are. Because, you know, when, when we study the Bible, one of the things that's important to keep in mind especially when you look at the epistles. The epistles were all portraits of what, what a church was going through. And, and the apostles would actually write to whatever the, the situation and the circumstance was in that church in terms of things that they were doing good, things that they were not doing so well, and it, and it gave them an opportunity to be able to evaluate things properly. And the other thing that came out of that is the fact that the reason that, watch this, the reason that Paul could write to a church like in Rome that he knew nothing about is because somebody, watch this, told him about what was going on in the church. And so he could write in terms of what was happening in that church. Paul was in prison when he writes to the church of Ephesus and the church of 
uh, the church at Colossae, the church of, 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 of Philippi, when he writes, he is in prison. But the only way that Paul can know that there is disagreement between those two ladies, somebody had to tell him. Once he knew, now Paul knew how to respond based upon the knowledge that God had given him, and he would write it in a letter. Watch this. Those letters that for things that were told by the people, now the church could correct themselves. The church could do what was necessary for them to be a strong church. Amen? Amen. So we, what we're saying is, is that we're utilizing this time just to help us to see who we are, to know what we can do better, to make, start making determinations. What can we leave alone? What can we in, include in what we're doing? Because it's going to take all of us, helping all of us, allowing for, for God to allow the Good Shepherd Church to be all that it needs to be, right? So, so just keep, again, thank y'all so much. Would y'all just stand and at least take a bow, and you may return to your seats. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's come on. Thank you, Chad. Bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was, I was going to say we need to write it down, but we got it on video. So we can go back, and we're going to go back over some of the things that were talked about so that, as I said, we can effectively deal with some of the things, some of those issues that have been brought up. I'm, on this side, I'm going to ask, is that maybe one person, one person who would, who would want to say something in terms of what we just experienced, what you just heard, uh, something that you want to add to, maybe what was said as far as the conversation is concerned, somebody other than Pastor Johnson? Anybody? Mac, I see you. Go ahead, please. I'm sorry, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I see somebody else? I see somebody else? Judy. Oh, Judy, all right, all right. Mac, you will go, please. And then, and then Judy, please. Go ahead, go ahead, Brother Mac. Could you just stand, please?
white folks to something I'm not hooked up with. Huh? Really is. Anyone else, please? Your exposure, you youth or conservative? Any other young person? Nobody else? God. 
What is the message? Is it a message that glorifies me? Is it a message that can help my church to grow? Or is it not? Those songs that are just all about me and about, you know, what, what you know, me, 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 me. God is not about that. If that song glorifies him and if that church can help you to think about God and help you to grow and help you to use it in your daily life, that's the kind of song that God wants us. That's the kind of ministry God wants us to have. So what I'm saying, what we're going to come out with in this particular setting is to say this. We're not going to be a church that does one thing. We're going to be a church that's inclusive where we can do it all. On an average Sunday, on an average Sunday, we can literally sing, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me. That's a little child song, right? That's a generational song. But then we can also say, God, me, oh, God. Or we can also say, oh, how I love Jesus. But then we can also say, Lord, I'm praying. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because this is what makes up the church. And if we learn to embrace all of it, and not look at any of it as unnecessary, I don't need it, it ain't what, it ain't what I do. No, what you got to understand, God has made us multi-generational for a purpose so that we can all seek him. That's why we're here. That's the purpose he made us for. So we're going to work at it. We're going to work at it. Uh, we were celebrating now 60 years. The plan for the next 60 years is to do everything we can to make sure that everybody in this congregation is inclusive in everything that we do. Now, understand, there are going to be opportunities to serve. But you're gonna, as I think uh, uh, Mariah said, parents, you got to bring your children. you gotta, you got to have them involved. Uh, uh, I think uh, so, so, someone on the panel actually said, if we're going to do some things for services concerned, we got to be willing to participate and engage. And I'm certainly agreeing with what Sister Audubon is saying. We can build a building. All it takes is for us to make up our mind to give. And it can happen for us. So Paul would say, Paul would remind us, Acts chapter 17. He says, we all come up from one blood. God has made us from one blood. And he has determined, he has assigned, he has appointed an assignment for you and I. That, that, that he's made a predetermination that where we are is where God wants us to be. Who we are is who God wants us to be. But we recognize what makes it all come together is that we center it on the person of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And when we're focused on Jesus, yeah. can I get a witness in here? Yeah. When we focus on Jesus, yeah. it, we're not going to worry about how somebody looks about how they dress, about how they smell. All we're going to say is thank God for Jesus. Because when I look at him, I'm reminded beyond the shadow of a doubt that if it had not been for the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, I would not be the person that I am today. So if God can change me, sermons here today. Yeah. Got a lot of challenges in here today. Yeah. 
got some testimonies of truth yeah. in here today. Yeah. And so, Lord, we can leave here believing that we heard from you today. Because you declared in your word, in your word, that we need to be more like Jesus. You declared in your word we need to be more concerned about one another. You declared in your word this ought to be a place where we can get some truth. You declared in your word that we ought to be more about serving yeah. one another. And we thank you for it. Amen. And now, Lord, even in, and right now, yeah. there's someone who came in here and, and maybe have looked at this unusual service, oh, yeah. this unique service. And have heard something, a testimony from either yeah. Brother James or from somebody else of, of your goodness and your greatness. Yeah. Yeah. And now, Lord, they, they've made the decision to make Jesus their choice. Yeah. I pray that you would speak to their heart now. Yeah. As we say our this invitation, yeah. we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our servant leaders, those of you that can come out and talk to your brothers, if you all would, please. <coughs> want to share the invitation. And that is, I think... Uh, we heard, we heard, we heard the invitation at the beginning of the, the forum, the beginning of the conversation. Uh, Thomas said the church is made up of people who believe that Jesus died and he was buried and that he rose from the dead. <laughs> that was the beginning. That was the beginning talk that we had. So, so what does that say to us? If you haven't trusted him as your savior, today is the day to do that. If you don't know Jesus to be your savior. Today is the day to do that. But what must you believe? We already told you. You got to believe he died. You got to believe he was buried in a grave. And you got to believe that God raised him from the dead. And if you believe that, you can be saved. And I know what you're saying. Lee, Pastor, uh, Reverend, saved from what? John 3 16 says this For God so loved the world that he gave. It's the only begotten Son. Yeah. That whoever would believe in Him, yeah. whoever would believe in Him, there's the language, would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Would not perish, but have everlasting life. Would not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. So what it's telling us that there is an opposite of the everlasting life that Jesus offers. And when we read the Bible, the Bible helps us to describe it as the lake of fire. Yes, uh, and it's a place that I, I phone pastor who Wilson used to say, shh, 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 shh. I phone pastor used to say it this way. It's a place you can check in, but you can't check out. Yeah. It's a place that Jesus says, yeah. where the worm does not die, yeah. nor is the fire quenched. Yeah. So it tells us that it is the eternal place of yeah condemnation, an eternal place of separation, and an eternal place of experiencing the just tremendous wrath of God. But there's an opposite place. Everlasting life. And that's what we offer you today. Everlasting life. That you can have this life with Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. This everlasting life is a life that is attained by believing in his son. And when you believe in his son, your sins are forgiven. Those things that you've done in your past, things that you've done that nobody knows, things that you'll never tell anybody else, but God knows he's forgiven you for those things. Those things now put you into a family. You become the family of, uh, of God. You become the children of God. You, you become part of the family of Jesus Christ. And in that family, you got joy and love and peace and long-suffering and kindness. You got goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. And you get all of that because he gives you the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Everlasting life is a wonderful life. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. It's not life on the norm. It's not life uh, just kind of in the medium. But it's living an extraordinary life. So today, if you haven't trusted in Jesus as your Savior, we want to invite you to be, to be part of that everlasting life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That life where you can live with him forever, you can enjoy him forever, you yeah. can join him forever, you can sing praises to him and worship yeah. him and just live a life fulfilling, knowing you're living a life that's pleasing to God. Yeah, 
that describes you today. Stand where you are, come if you will. We offer you to Christ. We offer Christ to you today. He's the only one. He's the only one. He's the only one. All of us have come to know him. We're all coming to know him just a little bit better. And if I can get the saints to help me, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, you know, can't nobody. 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 Nobody do us like Jesus. That's something about just the name of Jesus. Just the name of Jesus. Because that describes you today. Come with me with me. No matter where you are, no matter who you are. No matter who you are. Maybe again, you are a believer. Maybe you're saying, you know, it was a kind of unusual service, but I like that church. Maybe today is the day that God says to you, this is the day to be a part of the Good Shepherd family. If that describes you today, come on, come on. You know who you are. Come on. We would love you to be part of our church family. You know what we said? We're not trying to be a church that does one thing. We're trying to do is be a church that embraces all that God has for us. Because we know he's worthy. And he's deserving of it. Amen. If that describes you today, come wherever you are. Stand if you choose. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. One more thing. God, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for hearing from James and Chan and Tyler. Thomas is our one. Oscar. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us to give you reverence and praise and and just to even express, hear them express in their own ways how they see you blessing them. How, how, how they see you using them for the purpose of the growth of our church and ultimately to give you glory. So thank you again for this opportunity. We pray now that you will bless our, our time of giving, our time of announcements. To the end, Lord, again, the glory is always yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand praise one more time? I want to acknowledge again the presence of those of you that are visiting with us here today. Um, if you just stand where you are, if you don't mind, please. Uh, we've got some great friends from the Lakeland Baptist Church. Y'all remember my friend Wilbur Baker? Uh, they are members there. Thank y'all so much for being with us here today. Um, 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 I, I promise when I go there in April, I'm going to preach a little different than we did today. All right. Amen. Thank y'all so much for your, for your visit. Lula, Lula can, can I get you to stand? I know you don't feel like I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I know you're not. I know you're not. I, I got to say this. I got to say this because when I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, I was in love with that lady right there. I was, just, oh, man. I was head over heels in love with that lady. The moment I would see her, my knees would shake. Ooh, I'm a tall little fella, man. I miss Miss Lula, and it was actually all of her sisters, but her. Oh, Jesus! I want to marry Miss Lula one day. I know that thing wasn't gonna ever work for me, but I tell you, boy. But, but Lula, thank you for being with us today. Certainly appreciate it. Always good to have you uh, in our presence, brother. Let's get ready now for our offering, ushers. If you would come right this time, it's offering time. It's offering time. It is offering time. The Bible says that God loves what? A cheerful giver. I announce it simultaneously. I want to give our attention to it this time. Good morning, Good Shepherd. These are your announcements for the week of March 31st, 2019. We are in need of young adults interested in serving as an audio, video, or computer technician to help serve in our media ministry. If you are interested, please call the church office or see Julia Johnson. Calling all ladies 18 and up. Ladies, April is our month to serve. We need ushers, devotion leaders, and someone for hospitality for each Sunday of April. Sign up with Tanisha Skinner. Tuesday, April 23rd, will be our women's choir rehearsal at 7 p.m. Saturday, April 27th, at 10 a.m., we want all ladies to come out for food, fun, and fellowship for our pre-anniversary sister love brunch here at the church. All ladies, please see Denise Harris to sign up to bring a brunch item. And then get ready to celebrate our Savior on Sunday 
April 28th at 9 a.m. for our Sister Love <coughs> Annual Day. Pastor Charles Allen Jr., Mount Nebo Baptist Church, will be preaching the word. Wear pastels and pearls on that Sunday. Can't wait to fellowship and worship with you. Parents, the children are preparing for Resurrection Sunday. Please make plans to allow your child to attend Bible study and Sunday school every Sunday so that they can be readily prepared on Resurrection Sunday. All 2019 high school graduates, do you want free money for college? If so, please see Marvin Wilson today for your scholarship application. Marvin Wilson, will you please stand? Children and youth ages 9 through 17, it's that time of the year to sign up for Stony Creek. If you are planning on attending this summer from July 23rd through the 27th, please sign up in the lobby. There's space for only 20, so first come, first serve. Remember to read your program and turn in your announcements to the church office no later than 12 noon on Wednesdays. Have a great week as we press on to our 60th church anniversary, loving and exalting the Good Shepherd. And this is Casey Haywood with your weekly announcement. Don't forget, these are the applications. If anyone desires, as far as the graduates are concerned, they're all available for you. Uh, you can always see Brother Marvin. I'll just place them right here right now for anyone that may uh, be interested in, in them. Let's not, we do need to make a correction in our, in our schedule. Um, I'm, I'm going to let you all understand. I'm still, I'm still having to kind of learn since we made the transition from, from April last year. The things that we would do March and April normally we probably won't be able to continue to do them the way that we do them because we don't want to do a lot to miss Sunday school. So we're having to make some adjustments now that I that I was not conscious of when we put together the uh, the calendar for the year. So rather than our we would we we I think we had announced that we're going to have to change what we call our just come service, uh, which would be scheduled for April the second Sunday in April. We're going to have to move it to May, uh, and we're going to do it actually the Memorial Day weekend, um, and. And we're going to transition from that to our festival uh, because right now we just don't, the, the timing and, and as I said, missing too much Sunday school, we don't want, want that to happen. So that's on me. I just want y'all to understand that is on me. I didn't pay, pay calendar enough or aware of the calendar enough uh, to make sure that we, uh, we had that covered. So we are going to postpone it, not cancel it, but postpone it to the fourth Sunday in May as far as our Just Come service that will translate again to also having the uh, our, our spring festival, uh, that's what we want to call it, uh, in terms of inviting others to come and to, uh, to be a part of it. I know it's a holiday weekend, some of you may not be here, but I'm going to just say it this way, if you're still inviting somebody to come, just kind of let them know, uh, we, as far as our church is concerned, we're still going to welcome them, we still want them to be a part of the service uh, if they would choose to do so, and we want to, uh, to make it worthwhile. So we're asking that you would re- Reschedule uh, yourself, if you would, for that, uh, please, ma'am, and please, sir. Uh, one, one more thing we need to do. This is a this is a plaque for a, a, a worthy person. The Apostle Paul gave a brief admonishment to the church in Romans sixteen and six. He said, "Greet Mary, who labored much for us. We, the members of the Good Shepherd Mission of Baptist Church, convey that same recognition." <laughs> of you because of your over 15 years
serving with Sister Mary Wilson, uh, yeah, we, we miss her. We, we actually miss her already. And so we just wanted to just again show our recognition and our appreciation uh, for what you have uh, have done for us. Amen. 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 It's offering time. You know, don't <laughs>
Callahan, Sabira Ellison, so many that are sick, Lord, and afflictions that it doesn't look like healing is coming, but God, we know you are the great physician. We know you got the power to heal. Now as we get ready to leave this place, we get ready to transition to our Sunday school. I pray that you would lead that process. Help us to bring glory to you in our study of that enemy of enemies, the devil. Thank you for teaching us how to handle whatever comes our way. To know that he got some power, but you got all power. And he's limited in doing what he does because if, he don't, if you don't let it, he can't do it. We thank you again for members that are traveling apart. We pray for Pastor Stan Fields involved in a major accident not ten on yesterday. God, thank you for protecting him. Thank you for letting him get back home. But I pray, God, that you would allow his recovery to be successful. Know there's going to be some pain that he's got to deal with. God, I pray that you will allow him to manage that pain. And give him peace in the midst of his, the midst of his challenges right now. Be with us now. Henceforth and forevermore, we pray. And all who agree today.